Let's move on to lesson number two, creating a page layout. In lesson one, you learned that each website is made up of pages and that each page is made up of elements. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to create a new page and then create a page layout in the Web Starts page editor. You can choose the pages that you would like to edit on your website by clicking the drop down menu in the top left. If you'd like to create a new page, just click the new page icon and then choose whether you would like to create a new page from either a blank or a copy of an existing page. Creating a copy from an existing page is a time saver because you won't have to create a new page layout. Just select the name of the page you'd like to copy, give it a name, and click Create Page, and it will duplicate that page. Pages in Web Starts are made up of three primary sections. The top section, which is called the header, whenever you drag something into the header, it will appear at the top of each page wherever the header is enabled. The middle section, which is called the body, that's where most of the content on your page will reside. And then the bottom section, which works a lot like the header, is called the footer. Dragging elements into the footer ensures that an element will appear at the bottom of each page wherever the footer is enabled. You can choose to display headers and footers by clicking on view and then choosing whether they're enabled or disabled. You can drag and drop any element in the page editor just by selecting the element, holding down the left mouse button, and then dragging the element where you would like it to appear. For more finite control over elements, select the element and then move an element in any direction using the arrow keys. You can tap the arrow key and move an element one pixel at a time, or you can hold the shift key and then press the direction arrow to move an element 10 pixels at a time. When you select an element, it'll be surrounded by a blue outline with some blue circles attached to it. We call those handles. You can use the blue handles to resize any element. For more finite controls over the size of an element, click to select it and then click the resize by value icon and enter the exact pixel width and height of the element and click apply. When creating page layouts, there are times where you want a specific element to appear in the same location but on another page of your site. To do this, select the element and then choose the copy icon from the clipboard. Once that element is copied, go ahead and navigate to your new page or create a new page. Then click on the paste icon and that element will be pasted in the same location as the originating page, but on your new page. In a similar fashion, you can duplicate elements of a page just by selecting the element, then clicking on the duplicate icon, and then that allows you to quickly and easily duplicate elements on the same page. There are times when you'll want to insert elements between other elements on the page, and to do this, you'll need to create a little bit of space. To do this, select the element where you would like to create the space. Click on the smart handle, which is this black icon attached to the selected element, and then drag it down the page. This will push all of the elements below this element down the page together, opening up some more space on your page. There are times when you'll want to move many elements together. There are a couple of different ways to do this. One is to click and hold the shift key as you select elements, to select multiple elements at the same time. And the other way is just to combine elements together. So for example, I can click add box, add a strip to my page, and then I can drag my text box elements onto my strip. And now I can drag my strip with those text box elements attached all together at once. You can do this with images and boxes as well. There are a number of included features to help you create a better looking page layout in Web Starts. Select an element and then drag the element and notice these pink lines that help you find things like the center of your page. Those are called guidelines. Notice also that one element will suggest that another element is in line with it and it will snap to it. We call this snap to grid. And then lastly, notice that as I drag my element in this blue over here are the coordinates of my element on the page. I can use those coordinates to place elements on other pages of my website at the same coordinates to create a consistent look and feel from page to page. We're just about to the end of lesson number two. So let's review. 
In this lesson, you learned how to find the page that you would like to edit by selecting it from the drop-down menu, creating a new page by clicking on the new page icon. You also learned that each page is laid out into a header, which displays whatever is dragged into it on the top of each page, a body, and then a footer, which displays whatever is dragged into it at the bottom of each page. You also learned how to manipulate the various elements, selecting an element and resizing it, as well as moving it around using both your mouse and the arrow key. You also learned some shortcuts, like how to copy and paste elements, how to duplicate them from page to page, how to use the coordinates, the guidelines, and the snap to grid to create better looking layouts. Doing great. You've already completed two lessons, and now it's time to move on to lesson number three, using forms with your website. 